Hi everyone, welcome to a four part tutorial series. I thought we could do these four little critters. These are from Johanna Bassard's Rooms of Wonder. And uh, oh, I'm just gonna fiddle with my camera a minute. There we go. I just needed to pop on the display, which you can't see. Um, it shows me how, uh, how much battery I've got left, which is always quite useful. Um, so I'm gonna do each one as a separate tutorial. Um, and I'm going to use my Castle Arts metallic pencils. Now, I know not everybody has these, but you can use the technique I'm going to be using with a non-metallic pencil. I just feel that the metallics work well for this steampunky design, but I'll try and explain it as I go through. So let's come in closer. And we're going to start with the snail today. Here he is. Oops, run out of room. Hang on. There we go. Okay. Now I have thinking I'm going to do the body in a sort of silvery grey so that's where I'm going to start and in our um, metallic set um, we have, I'm just going to grab my swatch chart that I made for these. Now we have um, all the greys are here so we have the Vesuvius grey, the platinum grey and the quantum grey there's a black and then there's a typhoon grey so we have these now this one I feel looks slightly brownish it's not completely so I'm going to use these three and the black I should imagine so I'm going to grab those out of my tin and I will uh, get going now if you don't have the metallics then pick three shades of grey okay and a black maybe um, I'm, I might use the black if my grey isn't dark enough because you can see these are quite light I don't know how easy it is to see so if I want to darken it up I may use the black but I will talk you through which ones I'm using as we go now what I thought I would do is we have our snail's body and then we have these steampunky cogs and objects on it I just realise my page looks a bit dark. Let's come in just a tad closer. There we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one colour for the main body and then another colour for the cogs and things. I think it might just help to separate the items and I think it might be more fun that way. We'll see if it works. So I'm starting with my quantum grey. Now this is the darkest um, of the greys. It's a sort of bluish colour actually, bluish grey. And I'm going to do the main body. And I think by doing that first, it helps the other items to stand out. Now, what I'm going to do is look at each section that Johanna has um, done for us and do a harder colour, um, more intense, so more layers on the outside. Like that. And then gently reduce the layers coming in towards the middle. So we get a less intense colour in the centre. I'm just carefully going around those little objects. Now I'm using a sort of round and round motion. I find that helps to uh, keep things looking smoother. And I want to leave a little bit of white right in the middle. Just a small amount to look like shine. There we go. So hopefully that's okay. Hmm. I need to fiddle with my camera again. Uh, that's better. The t display had a big something right over it. So I couldn't actually see what I was doing. Now this one I think I'm just going to do it darker top and bottom. And leave a little bit of shine in the middle like that. And we probably, well no, we'll go around the edge of each of these bits. We'll do these bits in the in a lighter grey. Now you don't have to use this colour. Oh, I need to take this down in between here. I'm just going to do it quite lightly to start with and then think about it because it needs to sort of be joined up with this bit. So put a little bit in each of these. I'm thinking we might want a darker edge. So we'll make these bits a bit darker down here and lighten it as we go up and actually just lighten everything towards the middle um, gosh I've completely lost my train of thought so if I was doing this with um, polychromos I would use a cold grey 
for um, the silvery bits and I would probably use my cold grey 3. No, this is going to be our darkest actually. Probably use cold, cold grey 5 for this bit. and uh, use the three for the rest so again darker at the bottom and then she can do the whole of the bottom like this yes yeah, so any brand of pencils will work as i said it doesn't have to be these i just like the sort of extra touch we get from the metallics and they're such fun to use, I think. I've actually ordered myself one <laughs> metallic pencil from a different brand. Um, I was ordering some polychromos because I've got a few that I've only got half, less than half a pencil left. So I was ordering some um, for a Christmas present for myself. Um, well, from my husband. <laughs> and um, I... Uh, I spotted on the, I was at Jackson's Art, they had a sale on their Faber-Castell, so I thought I would grab them in the sale. And I also accidentally sneaked a few other pencils into my basket, as you do. And one was a metallic, um, oh, I think that needs to be this colour. One was a metallic, um... I want to try the Faber-Castell metallic pencils and they do, I think it's a set of 12. Now I thought they were watercolour but this one definitely said it wasn't. So I thought okay I'll try it. So um, so I put the red one in because we don't have a red in this castle set and I don't really know why. So I thought I'd try to get a red one. I'm going to use the platinum for all the rest of the bits. Um, for these We'll do a bit more around the edge and leave the centre with a white bit. These will leave a white bit in the middle. That I can't. I'm just going to block it in the same as I did with that bit. Now try and leave a white bit here. Um, yeah, so I've put a metallic red in my cart. So I'm going to see what that's like. And I thought it might just be a nice additional one to this set. But I really don't know until I try it. And I also put a Karen Dash Pablo in. I really want to try them. And uh, I know it was dangerous because if I like them, <laughs> they're expensive. But I just want to try one. I put a green When I'm trying things normally, I always get grab a green one. Because I think that... So I've left a white bit here. On this one, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go darker here. Lighter here. Like that I feel that the lighter grey looks more silvery and shiny so it's quite good um, I'm pleased I decided to do that for the cogs because I think they're the thing that's going to be more shiny and see by leaving that bit of white you can see it looks even more shiny I mean these pencils shine a little bit but it's not that noticeable and this technique that I'm using works for non metallic brands as well Anyway, so I, I popped a Pablo in like, oh, those two bits need doing, don't they? With the, uh, with the, look, a quantum grey. Oh. <laughs> right, I've grabbed the quantum grey. Let's just fill those bits in. There, there we go. Right to the edge. Okay, so back to our platinum. So yes, yeah, so those are, but those are going to be um, little Christmas presents. So uh, along with the colour cube, which I've ordered now for my Christmas present from my husband. He wants to try it as well, because obviously he, uh, as you know, if you listen to my videos, he, he does art as well, so he's quite fascinated by them. I don't think he tends to struggle with colour choices, as nor do I. But I just think it might open my mind a little bit to some new colour combinations that I haven't tried, which is what um, Sarah Renee Clark actually says she find, found when she used it. And uh, I just think it's a bit of fun. Also, I was reading the reviews and some of them were a bit nasty, saying, oh, I could do this myself, I don't need this. And I just felt sorry for her. I mean, I know she's well off and... 
I suspect um, she you know she has her whole team of people working for her so she's making a fair bit but I just felt like I wanted to support her because um, I just felt that was a bit mean <laughs> you know I can do those two circles in the quantum grey so these look a bit flat because we're looking through they're not like a piece of um, steampunky um, metal we're just looking through to the um, the body of the snail underneath oh fun fact did you know that some slugs have shells did you know but there we go so we didn't use all of the greys that I got out so I should put those away so we just used the two and I suspect that might be the way we go with the shell as well now the shell I was going to do in sort of browns um, I can do them in the sort of mahogany, sienna -y type colours or in the sort of French grey, golds, bronzy colours. Um, I'm quite thinking that I'd quite like to use the bismuth crystal. Um, maybe the zircon bronze. I can't find it. Is that it there? Yeah, zircon bronze. So this is sort of goldy browns bronzy colors they're quite similar the bismuth crystal is slightly darker i'm going to use that one first so what i'm going to use this one for is the sort of background pieces firstly i'm just going to do this swirly bit now i think it's going to be quite difficult to make this shiny because um i could have made it darker on each edge and left a light a bit in the middle but it's quite narrow so I'm just going to go right over it quite hard because it would sort of be shadowy if you think about the shell and how it would look and it just sort of gives us a border between each little section so I think it's okay doing it hard if you were using your polys um, polychromos for this I would use mm, Maybe a nougat together with a Van Dyke brown, something like that, maybe. Or uh, even you could use your green gold with a um, nougat. I'm not sure. Choose your favourites. I think I'm going to do these as well with this. Again, in quite a hard oops, layer. Don't have to go out of the lines like I did. <laughs> do love using these metallics they don't lend themselves to all pictures obviously um, some are just going to not really work with a metallic colouring um, I think I'm going to block in these little bolty screw bits whatever they are with this I need to sharpen it and then um, we'll do those squares in a bit so I think I'm going to do all the bit, little bits with this you'll see what I mean so this is just blocking in because they're so small there's really not much else we can do you could add a dot of white pen if you want to I haven't oh I have tried the white pen it does work some of them um, the color bleeds through the pinks the magnetic mauve particularly and the burgundy rose you can't the white just goes pink with this I'm going to try to make it slightly white in the middle it's quite small and again with this I might just try and leave a tiny dot you don't have to. As I say, you could dot it with a white pen because these don't doesn't bleed through, but it um doesn't um the colour doesn't bleed into the white, but it depends what pencils you're actually using. You can test it easily though, get yourself a bit of scrap paper, scribble a really thick, intense layer of the pencil on the paper, and then put your white pen on it. Wait thirty seconds or so to see whether it bleeds whether the colour bleeds through. Um, this one I think will put some shine, we'll make it darker here and here and leave a bit of shine on the edge, I hope you can see. There we go, do you see? Um, oh, we've got little screws or bolts or I guess the screws again, here and here and here. Now we've got these three a bit darker so I'm actually going to do them in this colour. What I'm going to do is make them quite intense here fade towards the middle and the same here 
we want a shine. Think about your snail shell, think about the shape of these are rounded, each of these. So if we put our shine down the middle, we will make this look a more rounded shape. That's what I'm going to try and do through this whole one and it's a lot easier than it sounds. So just put more layers here and here and we can do the same on this one. It might not work on all bits, it depends on how what Johanna's drawn. I'm sort of discovering as I go what's here. So here we've got cogs. We'll do these cogs with this and leave the background for our other brown. So I'm going to make a bit of shine there, look. Make a bit of shine in the middle. So just layer it up here on the edge. Do a little bit less as we go and leave a little white mark. You can see it just looks a little bit shiny. And this one, hmm, we'll make the shine there, so we'll make it darker here. Fade it to there, really light. Start making it darker to there. Fade it to there, fade it to there. Whoops, and then we'll get a little bit of shine. A bit more complicated with that one. Make a shine in the middle if you can, leave a dot. Don't worry about these, they're too small, just block them in. And what we'll do is we'll make a bit of shine on each bit. So we're not look, thinking about where our light source is and where the shine's going to come from. That's all too complicated for me. So basically I'm just tr looking at each individual item and making, deciding where that shine's going to go on each one like that so that one's sort of top bottom here we'll go sort of top bottom make it a bit darker here we can't show the shine there because it's underneath but we can leave a bit down there and the same on this one i'm going to take both bits at once because it's small and just leave a bit of shine there here i'm just going to do the dots now we have a bit of a problem here because our background comes here so these um, we'll have to, we might be able to find another colour for these because they stand out from the background but these I haven't done with this colour, we'll see I'll get there in a minute I'm going to put the shine at the bottom here so we can see it like that um, I think we'll leave that as if it's a sort of see-through grid uh, make it darkest here put a bit of shine up the side there, like that. there we go. That one I did the shine top bottom. That was a bit silly. It should be the same. Never mind. It's not going to matter. Shine there. These block in. Bit of shine in the middle if you can, because I've gone over the line there. You can't really see it. This one I'm going to try and do better. I think if we put the shine across here, we'll be able to see it better. Um, so we'll do it firstly on this centre bit, because it's smaller. I find it easier, like that. And then I'll line this up with that bit. So fade it to here. This bit's quite dark. A bit less here. Just bring it in gently and leave a little bit. Same with this one. Just leave a little bit. There we go. Um, yep, yeah, fill these in. Leave a gap. Now these ones, oh, sorry, I hit my tripod there. I'll do a bit top bottom and let the sides be on the centre. Just had a big crash of um, metal, but it sounded like it was outside. It's very odd. Gonna leave a bit of a shine in the middle of these. It just naturally says to me shine in middle and this one in the center. Oh I didn't, it was too small. Okay. So that's everything with that pencil. So that was the bismuth crystal. I'm gonna move on to the zircon bronze. It's a little bit lighter. It's not hugely different. Sorry, I'll blow my nose. Right, we've got um, so we'll use the zircon bronze now. We'll start with this section and we'll just outline it. I'm going to put my shine in the middle. Outline it like that. Bring each side in and then you've got a little bit in the centre like that. 
Remember what I said about how here we would leave this shine in the middle. We want to try and do the same here really. So I probably don't want to do each end very much. So actually, hmm, yeah. I'm just going to erase that bit there a little bit. Maybe that bit. There we go. Okay. So just make it quite intense each side. Just bring that gently in like that. So we've got a bit of white in the middle. We can see if it works later. We can always add to it or even erase a little bit if it's not quite right. But until we start get going with it we won't really know. So I'm just trying to fade that across to the middle so it's much darker here than there. There we go. Same here. Now this is quite a big section and we've I haven't done the face of the clock yet. I think I'm going to leave that for now. So what I'm going to do is go all the way down this side with quite an intense layer to sort of get me started. Then fade it in towards the middle a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, sniffing. And then the same here, quite an intense bit and then fade it. And then just start to bring it in so that we haven't got a huge white gap. Just a little bit. There we go. Hopefully that is beginning to look... Yeah, I'm looking in the camera. I'm beginning to see some shape. I think this bit needs to be darkened a little bit more. And maybe even this bit. There we go. Now this one's simpler. Just dark here, lighter, like that. And the same with these little ones. The darker you do the edge, the more intense and the bigger amount of layers, the more you can see the white bit. The contrast is quite important. But it's coming along nicely, I think. Now this bit's a little more complex, we've got all these little bits and pieces, but we just have to think about this background. So darker here, lighter towards the middle. Same here, darker here, lighter. We're just following exactly the same pattern. If we make it darker on the edge, it may not really work in this section just because of all these cogs being in the way. But we try our best. Need to fill in all the gaps. There we go. And then this one, we just do the bits behind. So this should be quite intense on the edge. Okay, so quite a lot of layering. I'm just going to go all the way to this bit and then all the way back along here. Quite a dark layer, just plaster it down. And here is where we need to fade it towards the middle like that and the same on this one and this one I'm going to leave that for now because I might decide to do it a different colour I'm just filling in all the gaps trying to make it a few more layers when I'm nearer to the edge compared with towards the middle now this one we can leave a white gap in the centre, like that. And here. And what you'll find is even if you're not using a metallic pencil, you'll still start to see the effect of the shine if you've left the white um, gaps. And uh, what you need to do, well, I haven't done the middle bit, have I? <laughs> Never mind, is make sure you look from a bit of a distance, sit back a little bit in your chair and observe whether the spiral bit is looking right or not. 
and that will help you know maybe where you need to put down a little bit more intense colour. Maybe you might need to erase a little bit somewhere just to make it work. Yeah. It's, uh, I know there are some people who say, oh, you should never erase. You do need to be very careful. Some pencils are quite smudgy, and when you erase them, you can make a mess. But there's no harm in being very careful. Getting your eraser and going like that is going to smudge. Just use a very small area and see. Or put a bit of your pencil on um, scrap paper and um, have a go. I'm just going to use the... Um, no, I'm going to grab another colour to do these last few elements. Oh, that dot. No, that dot needs to be done in the zircon bronze, which is what we're using for this bit. There we go. But I'm going to use... Just checking what have we got that looks similar. The French grey is quite a similar colour. Yes, um, some people will be like, oh, don't use an eraser. It's good to see your mistakes and everything. But, yeah, French grey. If something is worrying you, erase it. So we're going to do these um, a bit like the, a bit like everything, really. So with a white gap in, a lighter gap in the middle. And that will help the illusion of the shape of the shell. Because these wouldn't be flat because the shell is slightly rounded. Just, you know, be gentle with your eraser. As I say, try your pencil on some scrap paper. Erase it really roughly and see what happens. And then you can tell whether you need to be much more gentle. It's always good to experiment if you're not sure. It's like if you're not sure whether a colour's going to work or not, scribble it on some paper, maybe next to the other colour that you're thinking would it work or not, and have a look or hold it up against your page. See if it's going to work. Sometimes it's worth just taking a little bit of time to do that. Now this grid I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do it quite lightly, but I'm still going to put make it slightly darker towards the edge just to help us with that illusion. This one I'm just going to go over lightly because I don't really want any shape on that very centre bit. And this one again, just a bit of a line in the middle. There we go. And I think we might be done. I'm trying to look at my screen but the sun is shining in my face. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, quite sunny outside. Yeah, I think there's our little steampunky snail. I'm quite happy with him. Um, I hope that was um, okay for you. I found it a lot of fun. So uh, there he is. Um, I will do the other elements on this page. Um, I'm not sure quite when. Um, it would all depend on uh, other other recording and, and things like that. But yeah, there will be all four um, that will be done. But um, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and happy colouring.